So, in the last video, I showed you how to create this very simple grasshopper definition that we can use to program the robot. Um, in the end, we simply had the robot go from the first of these three points to the second and then the third one. And just to recap real quick, we have these points that we then turn into planes. We then make sure that the plane is actually oriented in the right direction, uh, create a list out of these multiple planes and put this list of planes into our create target component. We then go into the create program component. We might get a few warnings um, that we can see in this uh, panel right here, but they are not uh, critical. Otherwise there would be errors in this panel down here. And we can then simulate this program with the program simulation component. Just to have the display be a bit nicer, I will deselect preview mesh edges and that should make the um, display just a bit less cluttered. Now, before we go into more advanced ways of um, defining our robot motion, actually looking at how we can do 3D, not just points, but also uh, how we can use uh, 3D shapes, geometry as our input and curves and whatnot, um, I will actually show you how we can send our program to the robot. And this is very easy with the robots plugin in Grasshopper. And in general, it's quite easy with universal robots. Other robot brands have um, more restrictions or it's less um, convenient to simply send something to the robot, but universal robots are um, very easy for that. So if you are using a different brand of robot, um, this process might be different for you, but um, for everyone who's using universal robots, this is how you do it. So you probably don't have a robot at home. Um, if you have, I'm quite jealous, but uh, most of us will have to do with the UR simulator. So I would in general um, advise you to use the UR sim whenever you are trying out a new program, simply because there's no um, there's no chance of you actually sending something to the robot and the robot doing something that you didn't expect. Um, so in a previous video, I showed you how you can install this UR sim. Um, I will not go over that now, but all you need to make sure is that it's running and that you have selected the right robot. So in this case, we are using a UR10 in Grasshopper. And then we will also use a UR10 simulator in our um, UR sim. So what is actually being sent to the robot? What is created from the uh, robots plugin is a basically text code. Those of you who have some experience with either 3D printing or CNC machining, you might um, be familiar with G-code. And this is pretty much exactly the same, except um, of course the kind of the syntax, the commands are a bit different, but from the logic, it's um, very similar. So we have our program, we define certain tools, we define speeds, and then we actually send our motion commands. In this case, this is this uh, move J. And then we have six coordinates. So it's not just three, it's not just X, Y, and Z, but also the rotation um, of all these axes. And also um, our acceleration and velocity. And this is what is then sent to the robot. So in order to send something from the robot, uh, from Grasshopper to the robot, we need the remote connection component in the robots plugin. So we select the remote connection, we need the program, and then we need the IP address. Um, the IP address is simply, if you're in your um, UR sim, polyscope interface, you can go onto program robot. And once you see this um, uh, UR logo in the upper left, then you can find out your IP address for the robot right here. Um, just as a reminder, make sure that you have a bridged network connection. So if, uh, if you go down here uh, under network settings, you should have bridged adapter in VirtualBox. If you're using a different um, virtual machine, this might be uh, like changing the setting might be different, but you should use a bridged adapter. Otherwise, it's a bit more difficult to connect to the robot. All this does is basically make sure that the robot or this simulated robot um, is, acts as though it was on the same network. So it's just the same as you would have a robot that is connected to your network. I will um, go into, if you're basically on the start page, I will go into program robot, empty program, just um, 
for us to be able to see this uh, graphics tab to actually see if our connection is actually uh, working. So we have the IP address by clicking in the upper left corner under UR. If this field is empty, you might need to actually set it. So you go into file and exit, set up robot, network, and you should select DHCP, make sure that network is connected and you can also see the IP address here. If this is not the case, you might need to go into the system tools, UX term, and put into the, the uh, put in the um, command if config, so I-F-C-O-N-F-I-G, and there you can also see your IP address. So even though it might not say that the network is connected here, if this IP address is um, available, or if something comes up, if you had, uh, if you enter if config in this terminal, then you should be connected. So program robot, empty program, and graphics, that is just to see if our connection is correct. And now we take our IP address. This is 192.168.177.26, if I remember correctly. So of course, for you, this is a different IP address. And um, this is the address of the robot. So, and the last thing we need to do is to simply have a button for our upload. However, make sure that if you are connected to a real robot, once you hit upload, the robot will start moving. So make sure that um, you're clear of the robot, that your program actually is the program that you intended, and um, don't just connect a real robot to this, uh, to, to Grasshopper and send something that you're not sure if it will actually work. So, to check this, I will uh, connect the button to the upload function and then simply hit upload. And now you see what I was just talking about. The robot is doing quite a big motion, even though we would think that it might do a different motion, but it is actually going to this first point, which was on the other side of the robot, which is something that we might not be um, aware of. And now that it uh, reached this point, it actually goes through the three points that we have uh, that we have defined and afterwards it stops. So the program doesn't loop, it just goes through once. You can also see in the log, if we actually add the, um, uh, if we actually click here to see all the information that is going in, um, we see program, program started. So this is just something that you can use to verify that actually a program was uh, sent to the robot. Now, if we have just three, um, three waypoints. It's a very small and short program. You can see here our um, text code is quite short. This shouldn't be a problem to send to the robot. However, if you have very large programs, this might take a while and it might also just not work. In that case, um, sometimes you need to simply press this button again and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. That is something that is hopefully optimized in the future, both on the universal robot end and also on the uh, grasshopper side. So. Now you've seen simply how I basically just this program that we had right now, I sent upload and the robot um, immediately starts moving and executing these commands. Now, unfortunately, there's not a very good way to troubleshoot this. So sometimes it happens that you hit this button and nothing happens. This might be because of a whole host of different reasons. Um, Maybe you, you did something wrong, maybe the connection was interrupted, maybe the program is too large. I will not really go into um, how you can troubleshoot this in this video. However, just remember that in the log, you can see program started and program stopped. And um, this should be your first kind of point where you look to whether or not the program was actually sent. Now, in the next few videos, I will also show you how we can implement a um, safety feature basically just a pop-up. So before the robot starts moving, you actually have to um, hit another button on the teach pendant, on the robot pendant, to make sure the robot doesn't move from, uh, from someone who's connected to the, to the robot uh, remotely. And we will also look at many more ways of controlling the robot inside Grasshopper and making more complex programs.